、まあ、今だから言えるけどその質問された時には僕のところに松田社長からもうオファーは来てましたよ<笑>言えるわけがないので。<笑> It's not often you get the chance to speak to developers like Naoki Yoshida, Hiroshi Minagawa, and Michael Christopher Koji Fox. Each has forged their path within Square and subsequently Square Enix, and their stature within the industry is second to none. Their collective credits span some of the greatest games of all time, with the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy XII, Neuro Automata, and Final Fantasy XIV, to name but a few. And it means any opportunity to pick their brains is a rare privilege. We were given such a privilege during their recent trip to the United Kingdom as part of their Final Fantasy XVI media tour. And although our time was brief, we got to better understand why their working relationships have borne such positive fruits, some of the crucial design philosophies that they believe will help Final Fantasy XVI to stand out, and why they decided to ditch the cross generational release tactic we've seen with some of the other PlayStation exclusives. So sit back and enjoy our exclusive interview with some of Final Fantasy XVI's senior leadership team. You've worked together in various ways for well over a decade, extending beyond Final Fantasy XIV. There was the cancelled Bloodborne esque game you've spoken about, and you also took numerous collective trips to Europe to learn and improve. Are you each able to talk about the relationships you've built over time and why you feel they have not only endured but have led to such positive results? で皆川さんとか吉田明子さんと一緒に仕事がしたくてスクエアニックスに来たぐらいのファンボーイだったのでなんだろうそれがこうようやく一緒にゲーム作りにチャレンジできるかなっていうタイミングでまあ結構14が大変なことになってるんで僕より先にね皆川さんとかあの高井さんとかがどんどんヘルプで調べに行ってる間にもうなんか全部立て直すんだったら吉田も参加してみたいな話からスタートしててなんか気づいたら僕は皆川さんとか明子さん大先輩なのになぜか僕が上司になっていて僕が2人の評価をすることになりなんかすげえ複雑な気持ちでした当時。正直僕はあのその当時今抱えてるプレッシャーなんかよりはるかにプレッシャーが強かったですだって憧れの先輩たちと仕事をして自分がどう思われるんだろうっていう,こうプレッシャーの中でその一緒にゲームを作ろうとしてたのに気が付いたら上司だからもっとこうプレッシャーが強くてもうなんか見捨てられたらどうしようとかこいつなんか大したことねえなって思われたら嫌だなと思ってすごいきつかったですよプレッシャーは。それは僕もです<笑> 10年以上やってる感じっていうのはもうあんましないんですよねまあ年取って時間の流れが早く感じるっていうのもあるかもしれないですけどあの14と162本やってそれがすごく長いかっていうと結構いつの間にかもう本当にあっという間に過ぎ去って今に至るって感じですね。振り返って言えるのはみんな結局ゲーム作るのが大好きで普段じゃあなんかこういつもしょっちゅう,こうご飯食べに行ったり飲みに行ってるかっていうと実はほとんどなくてどっちかというとお互いをゲーム開発者としてすごいリスペクトしてるっていう関係だから長く続いてるのかなとは思いますその高井さんには高井さんの得意分野があり多分僕には僕の皆川さんには皆川さんのそして工事には工事のっていうのがあるのでそこをお互い全部リスペクトし合ってるから割と長く続くんだろうなとは思いますあんまりこのチームが崩れるイメージもないですしあのこれからも16に限らずねまたみんなで一緒にゲーム作っていけたらなとは思う Koji, your official title is localization director but your role within the development team seems quite different from what you might expect from that position If you weren't involved with initial planning, can you please explain when you became involved with the project and talk in as much detail as you're willing as to what your role has grown to entail? I joined the project. So they had their core team、um, of about, I guess it was about 30 people. 
I think, in the beginning. And um, I, at that time, I was still working on Final Fantasy XIV. Um, a lot of people started joining, I think, around Heaven's Word, and then around Stormblood, they added a few more. And that was that main core group for a long time. I joined the team um, right before uh, Shadowbringers. So I was working on a little bit of Shadowbringers, and then right around the time as Shadowbringers was coming out, I did uh, transitioned over to Final Fantasy uh, 16. And um, my job as, again, localization director, it, like you said, um, it was a little bit different. Um, whereas Final Fantasy 14 was you have this script and it's pretty much fixed, um, and then taking that and working off of that. Um, again, there was a little bit of work with the lore team when I was helping create lore and helping with uh, items and things like that. But a lot of, for mostly for the story, it was the Japanese came, it's fixed, the Japanese is recorded, and then you move in, into the English. With Final Fantasy 16, because they were moving in a different direction, they wanted to create something that had um, that more of a, of a Western natural feel um, that they decided while we're going to have the main scenario first, then I come in, I translate it, um, I localize it into a way that's going to feel very natural in English um, without any kind of restrictions of the job. Basically said, just do whatever you want, make it feel like it was originated in English. And so I went in and we, um, myself and uh, the other person on the team, John Taylor, we did a lot of changing to it. And then we had meetings with my hero pretty much every day, like eight hours a day for like a full week. We went over every single line in the script and we talked about, okay, in English I did this, I changed it this way, I thought it would sound more natural if we flipped this around. I think we maybe need an extra line here because Clive's been talking too much and maybe have someone come in and say something that Clive can maybe bounce off of and get this thing that felt a lot more natural and it felt a lot more, I don't know, um, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to say that the Japanese was unnatural because it was completely natural um, in the Japanese. It's just that because the language is so different, um, to make it work in English, I would give suggestions like I want to do it this way. And because my Hirosan wanted to create something that did feel very Western, um, he was very open to those suggestions. And so we would go in, we'd change a lot in the English, then he would come in, he would review those changes, and if he liked them, he would then go back and change the Japanese to match what was done in the English. Um, and then after that, we would do motion capture um, to the English. Um, using, um, we had a motion capture team in Japan, but we also had one um, over here in Europe as well. Um, so we had um, very natural motion capture actors that were acting to the English. Um, and then we took the uh, English voice first before the Japanese, and we did face cam um, with uh, the English uh, voice actors. And so all of that, instead of up until now, Final Fantasy has usually been the Japanese is done, and you're kind of doing ADR, you're matching. Um, those Japanese lip flaps and trying to get something that feels natural with all the pauses that are in the Japanese and the pacing in the Japanese. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't just because there's so many restrictions. This time we didn't have those restrictions. We were able to go in and do something that was felt really natural from the, from the start and being a part of all of these. So it's not just, again, translating the lines, it's translating them, working with the team to kind of rewrite them, give them a better feel, then being involved in motion capture, being involved in facial capture and recording and then kind of putting that all together. And I mean, that's just with the main scenario. I mean, there's lots of other things I was doing as well. And so localization director, you kind of think, oh, it's just localization, but there's so many things that I ended up doing that even Yoshida-san was like, are you sure localization director is okay? Because you're doing this, 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 this. And it's like, well, but if I put all of that in there, it's gonna be really long and unwieldy. So just localization director is fine. I'll explain it during interviews. And so that's what this is for, thank you. <laughs> And there's a lot of lore in the game. Um, we have this wonderful lore compendium that's basically like an Ultimania that's in the game that can be accessed at any time. And it was fun writing it, and I think it's gonna be fun for players who love the lore that are gonna be able to go in and just read all of this stuff. And these updates, you know, these entries that update um, as the game progresses and you can see things, and you can see relations between characters and what happened in the past. And there's a lot of stuff there, as well as puns, because, you know, I have to put puns in. The inspiration of Yasumi Matsudo on Final Fantasy XVI is quite clear, but how much has Matsuno influenced the game? 
Are the similar naming conventions just illusions, or is it more than that? まあそもそも今回そのクリエイティブディレクターでありメインシナリオのスクリプトを書いてる前広が松野さんの多分一番弟子なのであの影響を受けてないどころか一番影響を受けてる人間だと思うので多分松野さんの作ってきたものを手本にしながら自分なりにゲームを作ってると思うのであいつが徹底してそこは設定してたはずだし。工事もそれに付き合わされてすごい大変な思いしたと思うんで。We spoke many years ago in the lead up to Stormblood. At the time, you said that if you were to make the next mainline Final Fantasy, you'd want it to be deep rooted in high fantasy. But you also said you had no big vision or appetite to helm such a project, and that the only things capable of changing your mind would be the company asking you to or the fans demanding it. So, what changed? Did Matsudo san come to you one day and say, Yoshida san, you must make Final Fantasy XVI? Or was it more of an organic process where you and the other senior members of the Final Fantasy XIV team felt you had a collective idea you wanted to explore and submitted a proposal? I think 僕は自分から作りたいっていうよりもあの望まれるんだったら頑張りますっていう方なので、まあ、実際社長からその次の最新作16話吉田さんのチームでなんとかできないかって言われたのでそれ自体はやっぱり14の立て直しだったり14そのものが評価してもらえたっていうことなのですごく嬉しかったですけどやっぱり同時に僕は14のプロデューサーとディレクター今でもやってるのでやっぱ16のディレクターをやるのは多分無理ですと。それはもう14にのファンにも16のを買ってくれる人たちにもやっぱり失礼に当たるからディレクターをどうやってその誰にするかでどういうゲームデザインにしていくかっていうところに関しては14もまだまだ成長していく途中だったのでまあ結構時間かけてじっくり少しずつ小さなチームを作ってやっていくっていうことをスタートし始めた頃だと思うので。Minagawa san, the UI on Final Fantasy XVI has been a hot topic of conversation, with the damage numbers being a particular point of contention. Have you felt compelled to make any tweaks to the UI based on feedback you've been seeing, and are you able to talk about how creating UI for an offline game like XVI or indeed Vagrant Story differs from, say, Final Fantasy XIV? <laughs> まあ、新たに合流して、えー、いる UI のスタッフにかなりの部分任せちゃってるんですね。で理由はですねちょっと他の部分であのビジュアル特にライティングであったりあとはあの高精度のエンバイロメントっていうところをどう作っていくのかっていうそちらの方の課題が課題のクリアがすごくヘビーであのインターフェースはどちらかというとこうもうかなり。最初のビジュアルデザインだけあの提示をしてあとは実際の構築はスタッフに任せてそのライティングとエンバイロメントに自分が今回は集中したっていう形になってますあの実は任せられたところに大きな理由があって、まあ、バトルディレクターの亮太さんとあの今回 UI を担当した高久さんっていうスタッフなんですけどももともと前の会社で同僚だったっていうところもあって、まあ、かあのバトルの例えば先ほどの話の出たあの数字のポップアップであるとか、まあ、そういったバトルのインターフェースをどうしたいかっていうのを彼ら2人がかなり連携して密に話し合って決めていったので、まあ、そこは本当に安心して見ていられましたあの UI に関しては結構初公開した時からちょっと格闘ゲームみたいだとか今までの FF のスタイルっぽくないっていうフィードバックは見てはいるんですけど、えー、と実際には一旦すごい FF に寄った UI 作っては見たんですよ。ただ今回アクションのスピードがかなり速いので画面に馴染みすぎてて全然目に入らないっていう現象が起きたので
もうディレクターの高井も含めてもう全部前に出そうと。もう表示しなきゃいけないものは絞る代わりに目立つようにって言ってあえてやってるのでこれはねプレイしてもらえれば絶対馴染むので<笑>大丈夫だと思います。You've spoken a lot about the relationship you have with Sony and how they've provided not just development support but also support in other areas such as marketing. But when did Sony get involved? Was it when the game was still in development for the PlayStation 4 or did it happen when development started shifting to the PlayStation 5? それはさすがにあの会社対会社の話しすぎてあんまり喋れないかな<笑>まあで作ってる途中で PS4 じゃダメだ動かないこれ僕らが目指してるゲーム体験をもう PS4 ではちょっと表現できないでこれで PS4 を何としてでも出そうとするとさらに開発が2年とか伸びる可能性があるっていうのが見えてきたので、まあ、僕のジャッジとしても PS5 オンリーでいいっていう話をして今に至ってますね Thank you. すごい詳しいね。Yeah, you guys know a lot. 